Welcome everyone, welcome to Monks. How's everyone doing tonight? Uh, my name's Colin, this is my venue, Monks Jazz. Uh, it's very nice to see you all here on a Thursday night for a sold out room. We have an amazing show for you tonight. Um, and thank you all for tuning in online. Uh, if this is your first time here to Monks, we only started streaming in uh, June of 2020. We've had a few spots, but we've been in here for a while, and we're just over 500 live streams from this space, documenting local Austin bands and a lot of touring people. It's been a really great journey. And tonight is our last free-to-watch uh, concert. Uh, we're going to start charging uh, live stream tickets, so if you're inclined to watch future shows, you can you know, uh, pay $10 or more. You can go to our Patreon if you'd like to find that info out. All of you tuning in online will be putting that info in the description. But uh, with that said, you can see all 500 of the previous shows we've had. They're going to be on our public YouTube channel. You can go back through history and see the amazing music here. Um, and part of that, uh, I'd like to tell you guys uh, what we do here. We are very much a listening room venue. There's hundreds of places to go talk over a band here in Austin. But here we just ask you to keep your conversations to a minimum so that everybody can really enjoy the show to its fullest. And we are doing the stream and the live taping tonight, so if you could take a moment to silence your cell phones, put them on airplane mode, turn your ringers off, all that stuff. That just helps a lot with the, uh, the live taping and the recording. And uh, yeah, without further ado, please put your hands together for the Mike Sailors Quintet.
Thank you very much. Elias Hossing on the tenor saxophone. Thank you all very much for being here and selling monks out on a Thursday night. Y'all don't have jobs? <laughs> it's good. You want to insult the crowd early. That way you can get them back on your side. That's, you know. Thank you. Um, no, thank you all for being here. We, um, we love you all. We, we're always really happy to see everybody in this club and and uh, checking out music. So thank you all for being here. So we're uh, playing the music of Louis Armstrong tonight, except for that first song. That first song was not composed by Louis Armstrong. It was actually composed by me. And uh, thank you. It's going to be on my record that um, I'm recording sometime in the next six months or so. And um, uh, I wrote it for Louis Armstrong. It's called, you can crack those. It's, just go ahead and crack it. Yeah, crack it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Make it loud. Make it loud. Make it loud. Pop bottles, like seriously. Um, uh, it's called Pops is the Tops. And um, uh, Louis Armstrong had many different nicknames. Pops is one of them. He also was referred to as Satchel, uh, Satchel Mouth. He had all kinds of uh, nicknames. And so uh, we're going to be playing all his music now, but we're looking at it through like the lens of 2023. So if you came here expecting to hear us play these tunes exactly like Louis Armstrong did, you're gonna be very, very disappointed. Um, but they're adjacent to it. And so um, Louis Armstrong is my personal hero and um, uh, I, he's my music, my trumpet he, hero, but also just like, I love the way he carried himself and love the things he said and they would go on the record and say, he was like very kind of like outspoken cat you know, from very early, um, and uh, just have a lot of love for him and his music, and um, yeah, so we're going to continue on now. We're going to play a song that he recorded and wrote in 1928. Uh, it sounded nothing like what we're going to do, um, but uh, this was actually arranged by, arranged by a great saxophonist in New York named Scott Robinson, and uh, we're going to play his take on Louis Armstrong's Cornet Chop Suey.
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. All right. We got the hardest song out of the way. Perfect. Great. It's all downhill from there. So um, I've been able to... Um, I'm really... I feel very lucky to have, like... I mean, I went half my career without really checking out Louis Armstrong's music. And then when I did, um, I spent the next 10 years, like, making a lot of my living playing this music. And um, I'm very fortunate that I found it. And, um, uh, and there's something about Louis Armstrong and his music that has, like, tremendous staying power. You know, it's like it's the reason why people recognize his name when, when you mention it, because he was such an uh, icon. He was, like, the world's first pop star. I don't know if y'all really know that. But, like, the, before pop stars, it was Louis Armstrong. He was known the world over. And um, he was known the world over, but not only because of his personality, but because of the sort of infectious nature of New Orleans music. And so we're going to continue on now and play a song. That if you go to New Orleans, you might hear this song, a little bit different take on it. This is called Way Down Yonder in New Orleans.
Ross Margetta on that piano. Thank you. Wasn't that nice? Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're going to continue on now and play another song that made Louis Armstrong rich. This song was like a huge hit in the 1930s. And um, when you would hear this song, how he would play it, he would play it like this. He'd go... Like fast, you know? And it's called Someday You'll Be Sorry. The song is about a gentleman, probably Louis Armstrong, whose lady stepped out on him. And the lyrics are, someday you'll be sorry for treating me the way you do. Um, and about how everybody in town knows what a fool this man is. And so, um, yeah, that's what the song's about. It's a real uh, uplifting story. <laughs> and uh, anyway, we're going to do a, a, our take on this, which is in the uh, vein of uh, hits from the 1960s, like The Girl from Ipanema or uh, Desifanado. So we put a little bossa nova groove on this. This is Someday You'll Be Sorry.
Thank you very much. Alex Bilodeau on the bass back there. All right, we're going to play our one ballad of the night, slow it down, and um, we're going to feature um, uh, a wonderful friend of mine and, a, and someone that we work together a lot, and he plays in my band, and I play in his. And uh, I always say this, and I'm not, I don't, he doesn't pay me to say this. But I, and I really believe this. I, I played um, with wonderful tenor players. I mean, some of the best in the world. And um, Elias Oslinger, who's from Austin, like very rare, right? Uh, from Austin. Unicorn, right? It's what, they call, it's what you call yourself. <laughs> um, Elias Oslinger is like a world-class talent. And we're so lucky that he lives here in Austin. Put your hands together for him. And um, he's somebody, there's not many people that I text every day, but Elias is somebody that I text damn near every single day, Amen. talking about music or golf or basketball or football or whatever. And uh, he's a great friend of mine and just like a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful tenor player and has one of the best sounds on his instrument, uh, I think, in the world. And uh, we're going to feature him on a ballad on this song. And again, he didn't pay me any money to say all that. I just think that. It's like unreal. Thank you. <laughs> We're going to feature him on a song that um, Duke Ellinger recorded in the 1940s. And uh, this is a beautiful ballad that back in the day it was a very, it was it's what's called a torch song. Y'all have you ever heard of this term, torch song? And No? Okay, we'll Google it. And... Um, <laughs> And this is uh, it's uh, uh, this is what, a very very popular song in the 1940s that you'd hear if you turned on the radio. This is called "I Surrender, Dear." Thank you. 
Elias Hosinger, everybody. All right. Y'all see what I mean? Man, this guy, I know. He knows all his major skills. Seventh grade. That's right. Um, wow, can you believe it's time for the last song of the night? I, that's unbelievable. That's crazy. Time flies when you're having fun. That's what my pappy always told me. Yes, and um, we're going to feature it. <laughs> we're going to feature somebody on this last song that um, is, um, uh, comes from and is jazz royalty is in, in, in my book. Uh, and that's the great Jerry Gibbs on the drums. <laughs> Jerry's somebody I've always admired, and um, we lived in New York at the same time, but we never crossed paths, and it took us both moving to Texas to uh, finally play together. And so uh, this is the first time that I, well, no, I played in your big band, I guess. I think I tried to rob you once. Right, right, right. <laughs> that's in New York, that's different. Than... It was in New York, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, anyway, we're going to feature him on this song, and um, uh, Louis Armstrong had a big hit with this song. Uh, with the Mills Brothers. Everyone ever, anybody ever listen to the Mills Brothers? They were a vocal, as you might guess, duo. And um, they had a hit with this in the 50s. Uh, and it's a very old song called Nagasaki. And um, if you know anything about like pop culture, history, or whatnot, there was a huge interest in uh, like the East, essentially, in the 1920s and 30s people were able to start traveling there. And so it was all kinds of titles in these old songs, like China Boy, Chinatown, My Chinatown, uh, Hindustan. Like, there's a, a lot of, like, sort of fascination with that part of the world. And um, this is one of those songs. So Nagasaki. Here we go. Thank you all for being here. I really appreciate you all.
Thank you all very much. Jerry Gibbs on the drums. Elias Hostinger on the tenor saxophone. Ross Margitza on the bass, the piano. Alex Bilodeau on the bass. I'm Mike Sailors. Thank you all for coming out. We'll see you at the next one. Thank you, Monk Jazz Club. Thank you.